Okay, well, well, thank you very much indeed for uh, inviting me to speak uh, today. It's great to be here. I um, know many of you and we don't have a long time today, so I'm going to sort of rattle through this. I'm Ben Pennington. I'm Managing Director of Polaris Media Management. We are a specialist maritime PR firm. We were established about 10 years ago. Uh, and we've grown from being a local only PR firm to having a national and international client base. And our clients today include China Classification Society, the Port of Gdansk, the Isle of Man Ship Registry, Oman Shipping, and locally Liverpool Seafarers Centre, the Battle of the Atlantic and Tap It Live. And the big benefits that all these organisations are seeking and why they're investing in PR and why I, I hope you will invest in PR and are investing in PR is that it provi providing it strategic, it can influence attitudes, change opinions, generate a six to seven figure uplift on sales, providing it strategic, increase your price points and increase the value of your business for sale. And this is where I've got to get the equipment to work. So I'm going to be spending about 10 minutes today, we don't have a long time, talking about what PR is, the benefits to you, and how you best manage it. So I thought it would be useful to start with setting out what PR is, because I feel there's immense confusion about what's expected of PR, as PR is often seen as marketing without understanding that PR is not sales and is not in the purest sense marketing. PR is integral in its own right to the management of any organisation. It is not merely an add-on to marketing. Look at Bernard Ingham and Margaret Thatcher, Tony Blair and Alistair Campbell. They were the Prime Minister's right-hand man. PR and comms was that central. And I urge you to see it in the same way. So stripping it right back, what is PR? What are you investing in? Our Chartered Institute says PR is about reputation, the result of what you do, what you say, and what others say about you. And every organisation, no matter how large or small, ultimately depends on its reputation for survival and success. And it can really give you a competitive edge. But the key point is that your clients, your suppliers, your team, journalists, regulators, all these people have a powerful impact on your business and an opinion. And that opinion good or bad, right or wrong, will drive the decisions they make to do business with you. And your perception is your reality. And it's worth underlining that and just think about that and go away and think about that. Your perception is your reality. So PR is there to ensure that that perception is accurate and it will look after your reputation and it will help build understanding and support. So our experience is that businesses that succeed with PR thrust the comms to their core and their CEOs embrace it. Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, all these guys are passionate about getting their message out and being the front person leading it. They want sales, they want profile, they want awareness, they want understanding. But the reality in the business world often is that companies will grab at PR without really understanding it and then PR firms will go out bursting with energy and make noise and sometimes this works and sometimes it doesn't work and when it fails it's usually because of a lack of clear objectives. So if you expect PR to create, to create new business you've got to understand that PR cannot work in a vacuum or wave a magic wand. You have to proactively cultivate the profile PR creates via channels such as networking, targeted newsletters, webinars, trade fairs and direct sales. So to prevent this conflict of purpose between bosses and the PR consultancy, we advise writing a strategy. So when you're writing your strategy, be fair to the process. Understand what your starting point is so you can measure the impact. Ask yourself these kind of questions. What is your company's current profile? Be honest about this. How well known are you? What is your reputation? Are you seen to be a company that is growing in popularity and that has momentum? What are you investing in PR? What's your relationship with the media? How many press releases are you putting out? How much coverage are you generating? Are you taking a strategic approach to social media? We know social media is 
full of rubbish and lots of noise? Are you putting out quality material? How well known is your senior team and front person? Are they seen as credible and expert and, and seen that they will be people who make a positive difference to any project they get involved in? Um, so when you understand your starting point, you can set your SMART objective. So for example, you want to improve the perception of your business in the UK and international maritime industry by creating consistent profile in the maritime media, showcasing your deals, innovation and thought leadership. That's fundamental, that's rule one. But if a big take away message for today is anything, it's try and align your business to the two big themes, sending an earthquake of change through the maritime sector namely decarbonisation and digitisation. You want to start embedding these messages in your marketing. I'm sort of pulling my hair out when I see a lot of businesses out there that are fixated with diesel. When diesel ships are not the future, in the next 10 to 20 years, they are going to be phased out. And you want to be showing the industry and your clients how you are adapting to digitisation and decarbonisation to help your clients meet these tough new targets. And understanding that if you're going to start banging on about green, um, understand that PR is about what you do, not just what you say. So don't greenwash your marketing. Be real. And good reference points are, and we're bound to say this, aren't we? But Isle of Man Ship Registry, uh, IBM, who we do work with, but also Lloyd's Register, ABS, DMV, the classification societies. Their PR is action-packed with these two big issues. And it's worth taking time to study how they present themselves. Other objectives, you want to be hitting a lot of people every month with your PR. So a couple of press releases hitting 2 million people a, a month. That is realistic. That's what we do for our clients. Similarly, social media, strategic social media based around heritage, operations and thought leadership. And please do share thought leadership, share knowledge. That's one of the most important things you can do on social media. There's an awful lot of rubbish on social media and you can break through that, that cluttered space by sharing valuable knowledge and helping people learn. And if um, sales are part of what you want from PR, then be prescriptive. How many leads do you want a year and how much business do you want to win from it? Awards are really important. Don't neglect awards. We were lucky enough to win the Mersey Maritime Professional Services Business of the Year this year, and that had a big positive impact on us. It helped us um, to galvanise our Chinese client, uh, China Classification Society, for example. So it really does make a difference. Um, but whatever you choose as your uh, objectives, try and keep a... Uh, uh, a fresh eye on, and dynamic eye on them and don't go stale and rigid. Ensure that you're open-minded and flexible to opportunities that come up so you can tweak your campaign accordingly. Very quickly, measuring PR campaigns is really not a simple process. It's really not. It's difficult. So you want to maintain a reporting structure so you know how many uh, press releases you're putting out, how much coverage you're generating. Same for social media, LinkedIn, Twitter have great reporting tools look at the quality of coverage it's not it's not simply about quantity it's about quality um you know the benefits are not in the equivalent advertising value but in what what pr is achieving is it influencing the attitudes is it influencing a behavior is it reaching the the audience that you want it's the quality of coverage that matters most and bear in mind that one article, say in the Financial Times or Tradewinds or Lloyd's List, could be worth scores of articles in other titles if it reached more, more of your target audience. But do be aware that with PR, it is slow burn. It is very slow burn. So uh, the process of changing attitudes and growing understanding and translating that into increased sales and price point and brand value is different with every business. So you need, to, you need to take time, and in our experience, it's 6, 12, 18 months before you start seeing a positive uh, difference. Quickly, we're often asked the difference between uh, PR and advertising. PR is not paid for, advertising is. They're similar in that they both try and influence behaviour and attitudes, but PR carries more weight than advertising because it's not paid for. It has to go through a journalist. Uh, and finally, just to conclude, to get your strategy if you get your statutory right, 
That is when PR can deliver spectacular results and has many benefits, including better reputation, greater awareness, winning business, increasing the value of your company and your price points and building the profile of your leaders as key people of influence. That's the kind of result you want and that's what PR can do. And all of this will be contained in my new book out early next year, Making Waves, uh, PR and Comms in the Maritime Industry. And I'm also going to give a quick plug to Liverpool Seafarer Centre, our nominated charity, which is doing its Christmas appeal this year. Please do give generously if you can. Thank you.